In this video I want to introduce you to an interesting device called the frequency meter. EC221 frequency meter, also known as the SCR211. This frequency meter was really uh, a key element in the signal core during World War II. It allowed the signal uh, core operator to accurately set his transmitter on a certain net frequency by the use of a calibration book. The actual oscillator itself that's in the frequency meter is a Hartley type, but it's quite a special circuit with uh, very high stability, and uh, we'll go over this schematic a little bit so later. The VC221 is really a heterodyne type frequency meter with a dual range uh, VFO. It does have a crystal controlled uh, 1 megahertz oscillator on board, and that is used for uh, calibration points on the dial. So when we put the uh, VC221 into the check mode, it turns on the 1 megahertz oscillator. And we just handled one of the uh, checkpoints. And as you can see, there's a crystal checkpoint for 3500. And we are indeed at 3500. The frequency meter is more than just an oscillator, however. It's also a direct conversion receiver. The oscillator acts as a heterodyne against uh, the incoming signal. Thus, when you zero beat a, uh, a signal, you can tell what frequency it's on by looking up the dial readings uh, using the, uh, the chart. This device was developed around 1940, 1941 uh, for the military, uh, for the U.S. Army. And uh, it's been uh, described as... Uh, one of those groundbreaking designs, uh, very similar to uh, uh, sets like the, uh, the German Enigma, an absolute game changer. Uh, this set allowed you to put uh, equipment right on net frequencies without the need of uh, crystals. Crystals were very, uh, very popular during the 30s to put transmitters on frequency. But by using these devices, we could now have a transmitter and a receiver put on a, on a channel within a few hundred hertz. This uh, technical manual I'm holding up is the TM11-300. Uh, describes the SCR211, which is also known as the BC221. And it has uh, many, many manufacturers, many versions. Um, the need for these was so great during World War II that many manufacturers were given uh, contracts. So you'll see them in all different colors and shapes. Um, I'm showing an early one that's in a wooden cabinet with olive drab. And I'm showing a little bit later one that's all aluminum with a uh, crinkle finish. So we have a command transmitter and we'd like to set its frequency to 3.570 or 3570 kilohertz using the frequency meter. The first thing we do is look up 3570 on the chart. And according to the chart, that corresponds to a dial setting of 3824.9. So it looks like the frequency meter is off a little bit. It's reading 3570.17. So it's 170 hertz high in frequency. This is still pretty good uh, setting accuracy, however being able to set a transmitter uh, below 200 hertz with an instrument that has not been calibrated for going on 30 or 40 years is not a bad uh, showing for the frequency meter. Okay, what we're looking at is a regenerative receiver in the 80 meter band. Now over here I have a command transmitter. This is an ARC-5. Now I'm going to try to tune the regen to the same frequency as the transmitter. I am transmitting into a dummy load. Notice I can't quite tune the regen because it blocks. When they have a strong RF signal, like the signal from your transmitter, you cannot typically zero beat the regen. The regen will overload 
and you won't be able to exactly tell what your frequency is. Now, that oscillator that we use to zero beat that's inside the BC221 is weak enough that our little um, regenerative receiver should now be able to hear it. So let's turn up the volume. And now let's zero beat the regen. Now uh, we know that the regen is on the exact same frequency as the transmitter. Let's turn it around and say we wanted to find out how accurate that this counter is. Let's say we didn't trust the counter was in calibration. And we would like to calibrate the counter um, to a known reference. Okay, we have the receiver on WWV at 10 megahertz. And now we're going to set the frequency meter to zero beat. And we read the dial on the counter. Make it a little more accurate. We zero the counter. Oop, going the wrong way. The meter itself has two ranges. Uh, the first range is 125 to 250 kilohertz. The second is 2.0 to 4.0 megahertz. So there's a low band and there's a high band. Harmonics of these frequencies are used in the setting book. So for instance, we just use the 2.5 megahertz times 4 to zero beat the 10 megahertz on WWV. To prove that the uh, BC221 is really a, a direct conversion receiver, a 1940s version of a direct conversion receiver, I uh, actually wound a, a small coil, attached it to a variable capacitor, and put about a three-turn link on it, and ran these two leads off to an 80 meter dipole and took the top of the tune circuit to the antenna post and the bottom of the tune circuit to ground. Then I took the, uh, the phone jack and I ran it into an old-fashioned navy beam filter and then over to a utility amplifier. Now let's see if we can pick something up here. Turn the volume up a little bit. Okay. We are synchronously detecting CHU. And of course, the frequency meter is so stable it remains exactly at zero beat. If we go into the range position on the filter, we now have some selectivity. Voice is completely gone voice only and both. Now it's interesting to note that the uh, the BC221 not only can receive a signal and you can use it to zero beat but it also radiates some energy. Um, actually a few milliwatts of radiation come out of the antenna terminal. A friend of mine, uh, Vic, um, who was a a World War II uh, signal corps man in North Africa told me that uh, he was doing his uh, his net communications and his main transmitter, the BC-610, which is a very high power transmitter, was down. And in the emergency situation, he actually connected a key in series with the antenna post 
to uh, 100 feet of wire and uh, keyed into the net using nothing but the BC-221's a uh, few milliwatts and no one knew the difference. Uh, like I said before there were many many uh, manufacturers of this set and the government allowed each manufacturer as long as they met the specifications and did not uh, change the form fit or function of the device. A lot of latitude in slight changes in design and the schematic even. The manual that, that comes with the, the set uh, lists each of these variations for the various manufacturers including uh, the uh, Allen Cardwell Company, Bendix, Philco, Rolland, Zenith Radio, and, and many many other manufacturers. Uh, the basics of this uh, of this 221 frequency meter is that uh, with the two different ranges, the low and high, um, for instance the uh, 125 kilohertz uh, second harmonic of 125 would be 250 kilohertz, and the fourth harmonic would be 500 kilohertz, and the eighth would be 1 megahertz. So the low band of uh, 125 to 250 kilohertz gives you a coverage from 125 to really 2 megahertz. Now that high frequency VFO, the 2 to 4 megahertz, uh, yields frequencies at 2, 4, and 8 megahertz, and so on. So I've been using the frequency meter with this speaker. The speaker actually has a 600 ohm to 8 ohm uh, transformer in it. Normally these sets were used with headphones. This is the schematic of the, uh, the switchable VFO that covers two ranges. It is actually a Hartley oscillator, but uh, very interesting. It has two taps on the Hartley coil instead of just one. The bottom tap going to the cathode connection, and the top tap going to the grid leak, the grid uh, connection. There's two resistors, uh, 37 and 38 on the schematic. Those are parasitic suppression resistors. This is a very sophisticated style of Hartley oscillator and extremely stable compared to the conventional circuit which uses only one tap. There were actually uh, two tube lineups used in the frequency meter from its original development around 1940. Um, the most common uses a 6SJ7 pentode in the electron coupled uh, VFO, the 6K8 heptode uh, uh, acts as a converter tube with both the uh, crystal oscillator and the, uh, in effect, the detector. And then we have a 6SJ7 audio amplifier driving the headphones. Early versions of the set used uh, the Type 77 uh, pentode, the 6A7 heptode, and the Type 76 uh, triode as the uh, audio stage. It certainly is an art to reading the dial on the BC-221. I'm not going to get into it too much, but it's a three-step process. Okay, let's take a look inside, see what we got here. the rear of the BC-221 unit we have the uh, three vacuum tubes, we have the oscillator tube, there's a mixer tube which also uh, includes the uh, crystal oscillator, and then over here we have the amplifier that doubles as a modulator. So I hope that you've uh, enjoyed this video uh, describing the, uh, the uses of the uh, the BC-221 frequency meter. Um, it, it truly is a classic. Still useful today in the ham shack. Uh, useful to shortwave listeners. Uh, useful to experimenters and to people uh, just testing on the bench. It is one cool piece of equipment and we need to preserve this for generations to come.